Hi, John Ason, Director of Instruction down here at 3D Golf Performance. I want to talk to you about some common instincts that we come across from, well, really everyone. I mean, you don't have to be a new golfer to have the wrong understandings and obviously lead to, um, you know, poor mechanics and sort of this vicious circle. The first one I want to talk about is really the use of the, the instrument, the tool here that we have. And, and you know, it's one of the, the funniest looking tools, um, I think, that we use if we talk about the use of a, a ping pong paddle, for instance, or a tennis racket, even a hockey stick. You kind of give somebody that, you know, instrument and right away they kind of instinct, instinctually will be able to figure things out. With golf, it's a little bit different in a couple different ways, but I want to talk precisely about the tool. And we have ourselves the shaft with the grip end here, and then the, the head. And, you know, every good player uses the tool properly, and these the mechanical advantages that you get by using the tool properly um, far outweigh the poor use of the instrument, if you will. So. Basically, you have two accelerators in this in this tool here. And the golf club shaft is the is the main or primary accelerator, and it's the carrier of the head. Um, the head of the club is what you hit the ball with, and it's also an accelerator. Is it's going to be pivoting or turning around the shaft's axis during the motion. So. One of the most common instincts for golfers is to try to use the tool in such a way that they don't get out of the tool the advantages that we just talked about. And that is trying to, you know, almost hold the club straight. And it would be kind of like if I described you casting a fishing rod, um, either using the lever like this, or using it, you know, like so. You wouldn't get a whole lot of power or energy out of the levers if you didn't use it properly. So, like in golf, we want to move the golf club like this. And one of the best drills I have for sort of understanding this is kind of a a flat-footed drill, if you will, and really feeling the rotation in your forearms, wrists, and hands, and developing a feel for the club head and awareness for the club head rotating around the shaft's axis. So basically, once I set up to it, I'm going to have my feet relatively quiet. Just use your hands and arms. And the experience that you should have is that the rotation through the shot will be such that your, your knuckles will face the ground in your left hand. You see the toe of my club is turning over. Basically, it's, it's closing to the target, but that's okay because the plane of the swing, the angle of that plane goes in and up and around us this way. So we need the club head to feel like it can turn around the shaft's axis. That's maybe, you know, one of the most important and key elements to hitting, you know, powerful and repeatable golf shots. You, you may have some work to do once you get that organized, but that's the first thing that you've got to, uh, you know, get yourself to organize is that that club head needs to turn and then you'll be able to use the shaft properly to deliver that club head. The next most common thing that we find is really about the golf ball and what part of it do we hit. Well, intuitively the ball sitting on the ground often makes golfers of every level, beginners and right through to golfers that I meet nowadays and have been playing for 10 or 15 years, let's just call the, the center of the ball the equator and we're talking about the south pole underneath here and the north pole up here, 
Many golfers are trying to get to the south pole, get under the ball to get it up in the air. We all want the ball to fly. So one of the most common instincts is for the golfer to try to use the tool, the golf club, to try and get under it. Well, of course, it's logical, but it's dead wrong. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that when you hit the golf ball, um, each and every time, regardless of what instrument you're using, a putter or a driver or a wedge or a six iron, it doesn't really matter, you're going to try to actually hit the equator, the center of the ball. And you're going to hit the center of the ball because what we want to be able to do is the instrument is going to give the ball lift. That's what this loft is on every single club that you have. If you don't have a lot of loft, then the ball will roll like a putter. Um, a driver, for instance, you're, you're still going to hit the equator, but you're hitting it more on the upswing with a limited amount of loft. So it gives you more distance by having less spin and left, less launch to the golf ball. But for instance, I've got a seven iron here, and you can see it has an angle to it. That face angle is called the loft, and when I hit the golf ball, I'll still be coming down the, the swing arc when I strike the center of the ball, the equator of the ball, with about the fourth groove. And then it rolls up the face, and that's what gives it lift. So that's an instinct that many people have when they start the game the wrong way without getting these understandings clear in their head that we're not going to hit the ball by trying to get underneath it. You can see that if I try to do that, I'm going to end up with a, either a really thin shot, which means I'm hitting the ball way too low and the ball won't get up in the air, or the bottom of the swing is just going to be too far behind the ball, so I won't be able to get my weight left the shaft lean forward to be able to compress the ball and that's what we're after is we want to have that motion like that so one of my favorite drills for this and I'll explain it to you face on first is actually to take my position to the ball here and then what I do is I actually set myself up with the shaft lean my hands forward and even my weight left by rotating my hips towards the target and that transfers my weight to my left side like this and then I'll just hit shots from that position getting the idea that I'm really feeling like I'm on top of the golf ball and my weight is much more on left and I can just let the club face come down and through the ball and I compress the ball and the face angle will give it lift. So once again I set up normal, rotate my hips towards the target with a slight elevation in my right heel. My hands are forward and I'm going to make a little swing to my finished position. And I really feel that I can, I can get good compression on the ball and it drives the ball forward with you know good striking action, good loft and you're going to get yourself some power from the way that club is designed to hit the ball and the proper contact with the ball and then the turf. So really really important that you understand that. The last common instinct that we see is probably the most dangerous and maybe the most common as well particularly if you understand the first two, and that is the, the hit instinct that most golfers have to, you know, to power, and that is usually somewhere during the transition or the top of the backswing, there's a, an instinct to go out after the ball, to hit out at the ball. And, you know, if you understand the geometry in the swing, we have this motion that goes in and then up and then down and out. So the geometry is really simple once you understand it. The problem is, is that if you have a hit instinct or a built-in motion from a backswing flaw, flaw then your, your motion is always going to be working out and then you're going to be dragging it back in and burning up 
all the potential speed and energy that you can transfer the golf ball. So what I want you to try is, first of all, the understanding that you go in first and then up and down. And this little drill is really simple. We call it our start down drill. We take the club back to this horizontal parallel position to the target line and then basically go up and down, almost feeling like we're going to be doing a mini karate chop here. So if I can do this where I got the golf club coming down, it's going to hit a low point with my hands where it just turns out to the golf ball. It's going to feel a bit funny at the start because if you're used to you know, moving the club out to try to hit the ball with power and, and force, then it's going to feel like it's, well, it's really going to feel like a pendulum. It's going to feel a lot more effortless. So let me show you how it works. Good setup. A one to two position, horizontal and parallel. And then I'm going to do a couple of pumps. One, two, and three. And beautiful strike there. I know it's going to take some people a while to get comfortable with doing that drill, but just incredible results if you can you know, start down with your club going in a more of a, a drop down vertical fashion. And again, the karate chop drill works real well for that. So work through some of these misconceptions uh, and instincts that are causing um, the many bad uh, swing flaws in your swing. And let's see if we can get you to some better golf real quick. So good luck, good golfing, and enjoy that hit.